This is a common sight at Rushmore Forest Products in Hill City. Truck after truck make their way into the sawmill that produces between 60 to 65 million board feet of four quarter boards a year. Yeah, we have somewhat of an advantage here due to the fact that we are the last of the Ponderosa Pine before you hit the East Coast. So any buyers east of here that are looking for Ponderosa Pine uh, we can give them a little freight advantage just because we're closer. It takes about 15 truckloads of lumber a day to keep this high-tech mill operating at full capacity. They're known for quickly turning rugged logs into what will become a woodworker's smooth masterpiece. This is the first step, getting the bark off the log. Inside the machine itself is a ring with six arms on it. And it's actually just going to peel the bark off. We don't want to cut it off because we don't want to lose any of the wood fiber. The machine can debark a 270 foot log in about 60 seconds. A lot of logs produces a lot of bark, about 250 yards worth per day. The logs continue on the conveyor through a massive metal detector. We'll find anywhere, the horseshoes, bullets, broadheads, anything that ends up in the woods will end up in a tree eventually. The logs that do have metal in them will be kicked off the belt. The ones that are metal free continue on into the mill. From here, the logs that are oddly curved or oversized will go to a manually operated bandsaw. The others will continue on to a computer operated twin sharp chain. The objective for both machines is to prepare the log for further processing down the assembly line. The goal is to get the most boards out of a log. With a little help from an operator positioning the log, the twin sharp chain's computer will decide what cut will prepare the log the best. The process is the same on the manual bandsaw, however the operator decides what cut will be optimal. Not wasting any wood, those sideboards that were sawed off will continue on, getting shaped and sized up by the help of a computer deciding what size the board will be. The log itself continues on to a curve saw. This high-tech saw made by the same people who make flight simulators will cut the log following its shape. We're cutting crooked wood. Um, in the winter time when the wood comes out of this machine, it's bowed, it's crooked, it's giving everybody fits. You can see the saw moving, following the shape of the log. With 34 saw blades and a computer, this machine will give the mill the optimal result. A log that once would only produce one board is now producing four or five pieces of lumber. We're actually able with the technology in this saw to saw log on the curve. So if we've got a log with a big old sweep in it, we can follow that curve. The advantages of that, of course, number one is we get a little added extra length. And along with that, we get a little added grade and quality in the board because we're actually sawing with the growth of the tree instead of across it. The boards now travel across the room to the trimmer. This is the last opportunity to make the board correct. Boards that are too long, too wide, or too thick can be sent back to be resized. The correct boards continue on. They'll pass under a computer that measures the board by thickness, length, width, and moisture. The computer tracks where the board's at all the time, drops it in the appropriate bay, keeps track of how many pieces is in that bay. When it's full, it'll automatically switch to another bay. Now that the boards are sorted, they are stacked. Every stack of wood will be put into kilns. Depending on the moisture that was measured in the last step, the wood will sit in a 180 degree kiln anywhere from 20 to 90 hours, depending on the wood's moisture and the weather outside. Heating the boards up correctly is a crucial step because it causes them to straighten out. I mean, that's a really important part of our process is the drying for the simple fact that we're dealing with 140,000 board foot versus one or two boards or one log. After the boards are dried, they make their way to the planer. This machine surfaces the boards before they're looked at by board graders. These check marks might as well be dollar signs. These marks are the grade of the board which will determine how much the mill gets paid. The mill produces about four grades, a common two, three, four, and five. Those markings with a fluorescent crayon will make their way under fluorescent lights and a computer that reads the grade. Once again, the boards are sorted by size and grade where they'll be stacked and sent to the consumer.